Welcome to Slaying Excel Dragons video number 47. Hey, these are the videos that accompany the book, and we're still in chapter 6. And we got to talk about the amazing text to columns feature. Now, we already saw this back in uh, almost the first chapter. We saw an example of it. Uh, we're going to start over here in our Excel is Fun start file. We're going to start on the sheet TTC text to column 1. And text to column is great. The data ribbon over here in the data tools, there's text to column. Our goal is simply to take this column of data and break it apart into cells. We want to take first and last name and break it apart into one, two cells. Now, in our next video, we'll talk about importing data and what the, the text to column uh, button does is it opens up a, a dialog box that's almost the same as import data. It will treat this as data that's going to be imported into Excel and we're going to say hey import wizard which is really the text to column dialog box. See that space right there? I want you to divide the data according to where spaces are. Now there's two types of uh, there's two methods we can use for extracting data from a single cell into multiple columns using text to wizard. One is fixed width, one is a delimiter. We're going to look at delimiter. And delimiter just means some uh, character like a space or an equal sign or a period or a comma. Totally easy. You highlight the data. Remember our goal is or our goal is to simply take first name, put it in a cell, last name, put it in a cell, and get rid of these numbers here text to column. I'm going to click on this. Delimited. That means we have some character like a comma or space. We're going to say space. Space will be the deciding or the factor or trigger that says that everything before it is a piece of data and everything after is a piece of data. Fixed width just means you could you could say exactly how wide your column should be or the data is. I'm going to click that and click next. Comma. Usually it comes by default like this. Your preview, you see that the data is treated as one column. As soon as I type a comma, I mean a space, it just gives us, separates the data according to all the spaces. Now, let's go to step three next. And this is where we can skip. We don't want these. I'm going to click on that. Do not import. Make sure that it says skip. Click right here, and then a second time click, do not import column skip. And it says skip, skip. You are good. Now, you can format your data, and all the way back in, I can't remember what chapter it was, we uh, had some numbers that were treated as text. Well, you can use this dialog box, uh, convert text to columns wizard, and select uh, your text and tell it to import as general. You could also take dates that are text and import them using this uh, trick as a date and it will convert them to numbers. Now the destination, I do not want cell A1 because that means it will replace that data. So I'm simply going to highlight it and click in B1. And just like that, skip, skip, I'm going to click finish. Absolutely amazing. Now, just for kicks, I'm going to show you how you do this with the formula. Occasionally, people want to use formulas. And just like we saw with pivot tables, you want to use formula when data inputs are changing. For example, you might have a grade book. And you want formulas that will always extract the first and last name. So you're always dumping new names here. So here's the formula. Now, first and last, you always have to recognize some pattern in order to uh, use formulas, or for that matter, to use the text column because the pattern we noticed was a space. Well, that's what we're going to do here, too. We're going to notice this as a space. Now, there's all sorts of different situations, um, but in this video, we have noted that there's just a space between each word. So that makes this relatively straightforward. Now, there's something called the left function. The left function. The left function, you tell it where the text is comma, and then how many characters in from the left you'd like to go to extract. Well, notice uh, we want three here, three here, but we want six here. So six. So how in the world are we going to do that? But we can, we can use the space, because the space is always after the last letter we want. And there's a function specifically programmed to find characters in a text string and tell you the position that that character is. It's called search search. Search, you say, 
find text. The text I want is a space. So I'm going to double quote, space, double quote. Anytime you have text in formula, it's got to be in double quotes. We have a space. That's the find text, comma, within what? That one right there. That's all we need to do. If you uh, highlight this and hit F9, you could see it tells us four. Well, that would give us one character too many, Control Z. If it's always going to be uh, exactly one space, you could simply minus one. And now 4 minus 1 is 3. This will work dynamically all the way down. So I'm going to, that's the number of characters, so I'm going to close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. Now last name, we're going to have to do something um, again with that space. First name, we just went from this, the left side in. But now for the last name, we're going to use a function called replace. And we're going to say, hey, replace, go from the first character all the way to the space and replace it with nothing. So equals replace, replace function. Where is the old text? Well, that's the old text right there. Comma, what's the starting number? It's always going to be 1, so I'm just hard encoding that in. And the number of characters from the number 1. And we're going to use our same search. Find that space within that right there. Close parentheses. Now, that's the number of characters. So replace right now is looking here. It's starting at 1. It's going to go all the way to that space. And now all of that is what we are replacing. That's the, and the search was the number of characters. So finally, then you tell it, what's the new text? How about double quote? Now notice the difference here is this one has a space. This one has nothing, which means replace it with nothing. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right? And so the beauty of this method, although you know text to column is so easy, why not do it all the time? But you could type. You know your name there, and instantly it updates. Text to column. Let's go look at on this sheet TTC1, TTC2, and here's another great example. Text to column. Oftentimes addresses like this are, you know, not very good. As we talked about back in our chapter on data, we always usually want to store data in Excel in the smallest pieces. For example, we want state and zip code in separate cells so we can analyze that. No problem. We have to. We have this data set, and in essence, this is bad data, right? So we need to get it to good, so that it's good data, so we can analyze it. Well, what's the pattern here? I don't see a consistent pattern because what I really want is that in one cell, this in one cell. So that's two, three, and four. No problem. In this situation, you just run text to column twice, once on a comma. That is separate one, two, three pieces, and then we'll do that little second, third, that third column, and we'll tell it to separate by a space. Now, one thing about text to column is when you have a large blocks of data, you you want to try and find a pattern, but you gotta also look at all your data because occasionally, if you have a lot of records, it's hard to really um, um, know for sure. So once you do your text to column, you want to then go audit your data and make sure it worked more or less correctly. All right, so let's highlight our data. Text to columns, delimited. Yes, it is. There's our preview. Next. Ooh, there it is right there. That's not what I want. I want to do uncheck and do a comma. Yeah, fine. Comma, I'm going to click next. We don't really need to do anything here except for I do want to change the cell not to A2, but B2. That way we retain our original data set. Finish. All right, I'm going to copy. I can see there is a uh, let's, let's highlight this column. And I'm going to go to Text to Column, Delimited. I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to click Space. I'm going to click Next. So I'm going to skip this, and I am going to keep the destination C2. That way it'll replace this. Click Finish. That got rid of the space. All right, now here, let's do this one. Text to column, delimited, space, perfect. Next, skip. And I am going to keep the destination as D2. Click Finish, 
And there we have it. We have uh, separated it out. So we would call this All right, so now that we have our bad typing there, <laughs> city, state, we have our little data set, and we can go move it wherever we want. We wouldn't want to, we'd want to keep it as a separate unit so that there's always a space all around between this data set, and then you could do whatever you wanted to this data set. All right, text to columns is totally important when the data is in a single cell, and you want to break it apart into multiple cells. All right, we'll see you next video.